What's going on? It is Coach AJ Lou, and welcome to today's episode of the Inspired Efforts Podcast. Man, today I had an awesome guest, uh, Demi Mathales, and she is awesome. I mean, her story is super powerful, and uh, just a little bit about her. She is the fuck perfect health coach. She's not afraid to talk about sex or anything else that comes up. Demi believes that ignoring what everyone else thinks is a huge part of implementing self-love. Her journey to finding a healthier lifestyle has given her insight into many challenges in changing one's behavior. This enables her to bring a high level of empathy, respect, and understanding to each health coaching session. Demi is a member of the American Association of Drugless Practitioners. She is a graduate of the Institute of Integrative Nutrition and has also completed their gut health course. Demi has a BA in speech therapy and a minor in sociology. She is a behaviorist who knows applied behavior analysis. And she is an author of two amazing books, which I'll leave the, the links in the show notes. And so get ready to enjoy a fun and exciting conversation with Demi Mateos. So here's the question. How are people like us who are the first to ever start a business in our family's history, who have no safety nets if we fail, and who have been taught our whole lives to find a job, work hard, and hope to retire with a pension? How do we get the mindset to turn our visions into reality and change the course of our family history forever? My name is Coach AJ Lou, and this podcast is my journey to do just that. Welcome to the Inspired Efforts Podcast, where we are dedicated to forever changing our family's history and turning our visions into reality. All right, so Demi, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about your backstory and how did you end up where you are right now? Oh, right now. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, well, my backstory is, um, and I'll just tell you how it all started, is back in 2010, I was a speech pathologist working maybe 60 hours a week. And um, I was also working another job, which was a behaviorist. And I started work at 5.30 in the morning, came home at 6.30 at night, had to take care of my family, you know, the normal mommy thing, uh, the working mommy thing. And, you know, I didn't take care of me. I was never on that list. I didn't go to the gym. I would stop off at Dunkin' Donuts and drink Dunkin' Donuts and have a muffin. Then I wouldn't eat all day. And I'd come home and eat at 6.30 and I'd be starving. And I would eat whatever was there. And so um, long story short, I ended up in the hospital um, thinking I was having a heart attack. And my little son at that time was six years old. And it was something that just took me out of myself to see like, you know, what are you doing to yourself? Mm -hmm. The doctor kind of said, you know, what are you doing? You're going to kill yourself. I was smoking. I had, I was on a load of medications. Um, I had high cholesterol. I didn't know I had diabetes at the time. Um, you know, and I had gained a lot of weight because of stress from work and I wasn't taking care of myself. And you know, that's a lot of moms these days. Mm -hmm. So my son heard that I was dying and started crying and said, mommy, don't die. And that just took me out of where I was. And I was like, what are you doing to yourself? And those, it was Mother's Day, 2010. And for 12 days, I was in the cardiac division going through many tests to figure out what was wrong with me. And they couldn't figure out anything. There was no blockages, thank God. Yeah. But, you know, the weight was really high. I was at 310 pounds at the time and I had reached a higher, I was actually losing weight at that time. So I would say I probably was around 330 when I was at that point. And uh, I was very stressed out. I ended up quitting my job and I ended up starting to take care of myself. And long story short, uh, one of my teachers, um, a first grade teacher of mine saw me and she's an IIN health coach through uh, Institute of Integrative Nutrition in New York. Mm -hmm. And she said, I see you, you know, working hard on taking care of yourself. And you seem like such an inspiration and a motivator because I had dropped around 60 pounds and working out and taking care of myself. And she said, you know, I think you should become a coach. And when she did that, I didn't realize that 
can I be really, can I be a coach? Yeah. And, you know, it took a few years after even graduating, um, you know, some life things happened and I went back to some bad habits and brought myself back again. And it's all in my book, <laughs> which is called The Healthier Greek. And yep. it's not just a cookbook. Um, it talks about my story of how I got healthier and um, changed my Greek foods to fit my lifestyle. And not only my lifestyle, but my family's lifestyle. And to teach my all of my family members how to change the Greek food. It doesn't have to taste horrible. Yeah. It, it could still taste good and it could be healthier. So I've changed all my foods now. And, you know, it took a little while for my, my husband and my family to like them <laughs> because I switched a lot of things out, but I'm excited about it. And it, and then again, to become a coach after all that, I went through some transitioning and I found my best friend, which is me, Love which it. was the really thing I didn't realize that I didn't, I thought I loved myself. I really did. I would get my nails done and I would get my hair done. And I always thought that I was like taking care of myself, but I really wasn't. That's not taking care of yourself, you know, getting to the gym because you know that it's going to make you feel better or going for a walk because you need to be grounded is huge. And those are all things that made me become a better coach. And it took a little while for me to actually believe I could be coach, even though I graduated in 2012 or 2013. I don't remember the year exactly. Sorry. But it took a little while for me to actually find my niche and find where I'm going because of the weight. I always felt like, you know, you're your business card, yeah. right? And so if you don't look the part of healthy because you know everybody has health what healthy is in their minds right but yep. you can see a skinny girl or a skinny guy looking healthy but they're like not healthy at all they have high cholesterol they have stress levels off the wazoo they're not taking care of themselves they're drinking and they're not eating so that doesn't mean that they're healthy because their weight is down yeah right so yep. that is you know what changed me and became became my like thing is like you know what if you could coach somebody that is where you were and you could bring them where you are today which is down no i have no medicine i'm not taking any medication anymore That's awesome. i'm just taking supplements right and i know what's working for me so and i'm losing it slowly you know i have doctors that literally would always tell me why don't you go have the surgery? I'm like, I'm not having the surgery because I'm not going to learn anything from that. You know, what is it going to teach me? It's not going to teach me how to reteach myself how to eat correctly. From when I was little, I, I, taught, I was taught there was nothing there. Just yeah. like, we're, we're having fun, eat. You yeah. know, and, and that's, you're, I'm a Greek family, so that's, everything is around food. Like anywhere we went, <laughs> there's food. Like if we're sad and somebody died, we have food. Uh, if, you know... Somebody's like uh, bored. Oh, you know what? You want some chips and something, you know, yeah. to eat at the movies or whatever. You don't need that. You know, I, I, it took a while for me to transition for myself. So I imagine a client that's coming to me that needs that exact thing. So that's where I come in. <laughs> that's where, that's what my backstory is. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, it's funny because you said you graduated and then you had still had that self-doubt. <clears throat> and I think that mm -hmm. a lot of people deal with that. It's called, I think um, it's like imposter syndrome, right? Where you feel like because you don't meet this certain mold that, you right. know, people, you know, won't accept you. But I think it's all, it's all up here. You know, it's all in our mind. Yeah. 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 So, um, but that's awesome that you were able to get yourself to overcome that. And now you're, you're doing what you're doing. You're writing books. You're, you're yeah. you know, that's awesome. Yeah, and I try to, you know what, I, I try to, like, you know, look at other people, you know, uh, if you look at Oprah, right, yeah. Oprah is still working on losing her weight. Yeah. But she's amazing, right? Yep. So if Oprah could do it, so can I, <laughs> you know, so there's something there, right, and, you know, and then I was thinking of all these people that I do love and that I follow, right, how yep. do they do it? They're using something else that's inside of them and it's purpose. You know, it's yeah. your purpose. Why am I here on this earth and what am I supposed to share with the whole world? Yeah. 
And that's a deeper thing. It's not about going and having a detox and losing the weight. What is weight? What is weight anyway? I mean, you just, just like a mass. It's yeah. nothing else. It doesn't really tell you how much body fat you have, how healthy you are. It doesn't tell you how beautiful a person you are. It doesn't yeah. tell you anything. So those scales really, you know, I, I get on them like if I could get on them once a month, I'm, I'm lucky. And I wasn't doing that for a long time, actually. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, listen to how you feel, you know, listen to your body because it's huge. Yeah. I mean, you know, getting rid of the medication, doing all those stuff. Right, those are. Right. Well, mindset, like you said, is huge, too. You yeah. know, once you get out of your head, you'll start putting yourself on the list. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Love it. It's beautiful. So who, who are, um, who are the type of clients that you work with or that you help, you know? So who are the type of clients? Oh, all right. Well, my type of clients are usually women, um, that are moms, wives, working moms. Um, you know, but I have had a lot of coaching my dog is saying hello, sorry. <laughs> Live. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so my my normal uh clients are people that want exactly what we just said. They want to become coaches or they want to do something and they can't move forward with it. Yep. And you know, I have a lot of other little things or people that come towards me, but I kind of select who I choose who I want to work with because yeah. you know. And one thing that IAN teaches us is that when you get a client, it's your choice. If you see that that client is not coachable, you can't take on that energy. It's yeah. too much. Yeah. And I've had that. I've had clients like that. And I did not really appreciate my <laughs> first. And that's why I love my first reboot session is, is me. It's for me. It's free for them, but yeah. it's really it's for me because I got to see if you're coachable. Cause if you're yeah. not coachable, I can't take you on, you yeah. know? And so, um, like you said, you know, I mostly, you know, 30 year olds, 50 year olds, women usually, um, that I work with, you know, but I, I'm trying to exact, exactly. Even though it's so many years now I've been doing this, I'm still trying to find the exact niche and I'll get there because, you know, I change every year too. So, Maybe I don't want to work with that, you know, and now yeah. I want to work with this. You know what I'm saying? So it'll yeah. change, you know, it'll change. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. that's Doesn't cool. Deepak Chopra talk about infinite possibilities? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, hey, they're all there for me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Whatever my tribe calls. That's it. Love it. You know, uh, it's funny. I watched a video years and years ago before I ever started my business. And this guy said, your business, you might start off selling green squares right? And then a month later, you're selling purple diamonds and then orange rectangles. Right. <laughs> and he's like, but in order to get to the final destination, you got to go through that journey of... Exactly. You know, and yeah. that's what exactly I have been going through. I've been going through a journey. You know, I've been in business all my life. Um, my dad owned buildings and we've always owned businesses. So I am really good at marketing. Yep. And I had a lot of clients come to me and mostly coaches that literally I end up helping them to move forward with their business because I could pinpoint it exactly yep. for them. But I haven't been able to pinpoint it for me <laughs> <laughs> because I like a lot of things and I'm changing. You know, every year I'm a different person. This yep. is my first year that I'm 50. Yeah. I wasn't 50 last year and I wasn't where I'm at today. And like you asked me, the first question you asked me is, you know, where, why are you doing it? What are you, where are you at today? And it makes a lot of sense when you think about that, because that's going to change, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when, when someone works with you, when, when uh, someone hires you to coach them, what is, what is like the big result that you get them? Cause I know it's, you know, getting healthier and things like that, but is there something deeper or something that, you know, really comes out of them when you, when you start working with them? Yeah. Well, awareness is the biggest thing that really, you know, uh, helps me to get my clients empowered and to move forward in their careers and their lives and their relationships. Um, but I, I, what I do is I love, and I love that I do this because I think it's just something I was born with. It's not something I could be taught 
It's just something I have. It's like my talent, you know? Yeah. I could break things down into like a livable thing that they could do. So make it livable steps. And I, it helps them to be able to actually take whatever they just learned the past, you know, two years with me yeah. and take it on for them as a lifestyle, you know? And that's why I call myself a life coach because, and I think I might switch it to lifestyle coach at some point. Yeah. But, I don't even know. I might even call it a, well, I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's, it's a mixture of being whole and it's not about just, you know, being healthy and skinny and you know, whatever it is, it's yeah. about being healthy, looking healthy and feeling healthy yeah. up here because that is the hardest part is to connect here with here. Yeah. Your, gut, your gut should be telling you, you know, Oh no, don't do that. And you should be able to feel it. Yeah. I was feeling that for a long time and a lot of people have a disconnect, you know? And so that is what my, you know, I make it realistic for them, uh, you know, and that's my, my big niche, you know, that I actually help them to move forward with small little steps that they could take. Not yeah. that I could do. Cause you know, I have a lot of coach friends that kind of tell a client, you know, you got to pull out dairy and you got to pull out gluten. <laughs> that's not going to work with everyone. No, I'm sorry. And you know, you know, the founder of our school, Joshua Rosenthal, he mentioned something in my, I remember it like it was yesterday, the first video. And I always remember that because he was right. And I listened to that and I heard it like in my soul. Yeah. I understand that, you know, you're not going to be able to um, change everyone to what you want it to be. You know, you, you have to meet them where they're at. Yep. So if somebody is not even cooking yet, for themselves you can't tell them you know what stop using a microwave and do this and do that and do it. it's overwhelming they can't do that life yeah. is too hard right now yeah it's too much it's it's an overload you're like setting them up for failure at that point and and you're setting yourself up for failure because it's asking one person to do too much in in a short period of time right away you yeah. know you gain their trust you got to figure out and that's another thing that i n actually does talks about primary foods primary foods are other things like family career your finances all those things affect your food choices and all the other things so if you don't have that your spirituality your there's so many things family you know relationships or even being alone all those things affect all those other choices Yep. So if you're having all these other things going on, you can't work on, oh yeah, pull out dairy and mm -mm. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. It's just yep. not. And that's what makes me different. <laughs> <Okay>? <laughs> speaking of speaking of making you different, I gotta talk about your your uh catchphrase, you know, your tagline. So you are known <laughs> as the fuck perfect health coach. That's right. <laughs> so I got a funny joke. I'll tell you. I had bought my first pillow and it says the fuck it says fuck, fuck perfect on it. And when I first thought about it, I was like, you know, it was only about just like fuck it. You don't have to be perfect. Yep. You do not have to be perfect to do anything in life. And I try to teach that to my son you know, my husband, we're brought up, and I don't know about you, but I know for me as a mm -hmm. Greek person, because I'm very, even though I'm born in America, I have so much Greek in me, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and it's just like, I was just like, you know, you got to do it that way. No. And, you know, I think a lot of people are, you know, I have a friend that's Puerto Rican or Dominican, and they all are like that. You know, they yeah. take the pound cloud and they slap you or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so you can do things the way they want it. But, you know, yeah. Is that the way it's supposed to be done? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be perfect. And that's what, that's what my name came out. So the funny joke is that I bought this pillow, my husband saw it and he thought something else. And I was like, <laughs> no, honey, don't worry about that. <laughs> so, and that's where, you know, I try not to, uh, I mean, you know, sometimes my clients screw up and they have to know that, you know, I'm not going to like go off or I'm going to, you know, we, we try to rearrange or change the plan of what we had said, you know, to make it fit that their lives at that moment. Because, you know, I have clients that sometimes, you know, we're doing really good. And then suddenly something happens in the family and things just go backwards. 
Yeah. And that's fine. That's fine. That's what, you know, the f- perfect comes in is like, you don't have to be perfect to get healthier. Yeah. And I, I always had this thing of like, no excuses. That's like one of my hashtags on my site. And from when I first started, there's like no freaking excuse. If I could do it, I've had leg issues for, I don't know how many years. Um, and I've been looking and I'm always going to look for that better alternative of how can I feel better without medication? Yeah. You know? And how can I teach my doctor, even though he's a doctor or she's a doctor, how can I teach my doctor that, you know what? Look at my paperwork, my blood work, mm-hmm. and see, like, six months ago, it was better. So why are you trying to put me on something? You know what I'm saying? It's better now yep. than it was six months ago. So I don't want you to tell me to give me medicine or put me in a diet or I'm doing fine. And then they would look at it and they'd be like, oh, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Like, every single doctor that I've had, my yep. I just... I just started with an endocrinologist now because I have like one more medication that I need to like literally get off of it by the summer because that's my, my goal. Yep. And he kind of wanted to put me back on a medication, which I did not want to go back on. But then he sat and he explained it to me and he showed me. And, you know, we need to start doing that. We have to advocate for ourselves. If you don't tell your doctor, you know, this is what's going on with me. He's not going to know in 15 minutes what's going on. Yeah, they are doctors and they studied really hard for, you know, to teach how to teach um, to teach them how to give you medical uh, ways to get healthier. Right. Yeah. But is that what I want? No. And then I asked them, you know, is there a way I could get around taking that medication? And, And then they explained to me, you know, no, you can't because, you know, you're actually putting your heart in in danger because it's actually working harder or you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. that is you know the the perfect part is all that it's like there's a mixture of it there's not even just one little thing to say about that it's just about doing a little better every day and getting better every day like a little better than yesterday that's it that's what my goal is with every client and that's another thing (laughs) that is that's me different. That's like I'm different than anybody else. Cause I don't want to just <clears throat> like lose 20 pounds in like, you know, a month or two. Cause you want to get in a bikini or yeah. whatever it is, or look good for the summer. And then you kind of gain it back again. By the end of the summer, you look like, you know, whatever bloated and you're sick and you don't feel good. Cause that's not good on your weight and your, your body and your whole, just everything, all your organs, everything. It's not good for you. So I would prefer that, you know, if I could give an alternative of something that you can do, you know, there's so many things that you can choose. You know, if you want to have a beer, don't have that other thing. If you want to have this, don't have that, you know, choose. And I teach that to my son who's 15 now and he's doing great. He just got some really good um, feedback this morning from his uh, hairstylist. Uh, She said to him that he looks like he's losing some weight. And I was like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, she's like is that you I said of course it's me <laughs> <laughs> no but you know I'm not trying to put him on a diet I just want him to be aware and see yep. that's what we were talking about is but that's what I bring to the table is I bring awareness of things and it's it's just something I was born with it's not anything that was taught by IAM but if you could bring awareness to a client so they could see that there is something going on other than I just ate that cheeseburger with those mm-hmm. fries. Then you could see that, you know, and sometimes it doesn't work in my benefit because some people are just not ready to go there. Yes. And they'll start crying in a session and then they won't want to have another session. And that's fine too, because they're just not ready. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. So that's fine. You know what I love is um a lot of a lot of times with coaches and and you know different people, you, you know, different, you know, uh, experts and things like that they have like this, this standard that they live by, you know, it's like, wake up at three in the morning, do 30,000 pull-ups and, you know, run 27 miles. And like, I love that you're real. You're like, Hey, you well, that's, food, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I do aqua classes and I switch things up. Like I had a trainer for a little while and I was killing it. And then I started going a little heavier on it and I was doing Pilates and I had to switch back to aqua again. 
because it kind of hurt myself. And, you know, I got to remember that I'm 50, I'm going to 51, yeah. you know, and I just want to, I want to run a marathon, but I had a full knee replacement, you know, and there's a lot of people out there that do have knee replacements and I get help those people too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I understand where they're coming from. I understand the pain makes you a different person. Um, I understand that being overweight is not just about the food. It's about the feelings. And yeah. I've actually connected to that. And, you know, I decided I'm going to lose it slowly. Can I go and have, absolutely, I could go and have one of those surgeries. I won't do it. Yeah. After finding out, you know, and, you know, for some people it works and that's fine too. You know, I'm okay with it all. I really am because in IAN, they give you, you know, when we first started in 2012, they gave us like, I think it was a hundred diets. I just looked at that list lately again. There's like 400 diets. So, you know, I have to look at them again because I don't even know what the hell half of these are. <laughs> yeah, no, sure. Seriously, there's so many diets out there because, you know, and you see it like here. Who was it? I just saw Kelly Clarkson. She had lost a load of weight and she looks really, she looked really good. And then boom, she's back again. So, you know, do I want that for my client? No, not really. So, you know, the client that's looking to do that, it's not for me. Yep. I'm looking for the person that's going to try and do it slowly and learn how to do it for the rest of their life and lose it forever. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that's what, I, it's not even about weight. I don't even care about weight. I care about you getting your mind clear. You could stay heavy if you feel like you want to be heavy. That's just me. Like, I'm not trying to get anybody to just lose weight. And I don't want to be, and that's what I was just telling my coach, because I have a, my own coach. Yeah. I was telling her that I don't want to be the coach that teaches you how to lose weight. I want the person that's going to teach you how to love yourself yeah. enough to feel healthy. Because, yeah. you know, I want to walk the wall of China, right? I can't do that with my knee replacement and the pain that I'm having. But mm -hmm. every day I'm working towards it. Yep. And I will hit that China wall. I may not walk the whole thing, but I'm going to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I want to. And that's it. And I choose to. And I get to. You yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. A, it's a beautiful thing when, um, and it's crazy how many people don't realize that we can, we can choose to do or not do things. You know what I mean? And, right. Yeah. And it's all a choice. You know, I have... Um, uh, my doctor, uh, George Cosmides, he passed away. Poor, he was one of my mentors. But he had written a book called The Life Without Diabetes. And so healthy. I wish I had a picture. I don't know if there's a picture in this book. I doubt it. But if you go on his website, you'll see he was such a healthy man. And he talked about losing body fat, yep. not losing weight. Yeah. And he taught about not being perfect. He's my mentor. And Till the day I die, I will be talking about this man because he was amazing to me. And he always used to tell us, you know, it's not about being perfect. It's about, you know, doing what you can every day to get your body, your insides yep. healthier. And he worked on the liver, digestion, and everything he's literally taught us in his group is just amazing for me. And it was just eye-opening. When, when I first met this man... I would be like, oh, he's so rude. Oh, he's like, he's, but he was just straightforward and he told you exactly how it was. And, you know, do I do, do I practice that exact thing when I coach? No, I don't. But what I do do is I try to bring it to the person where they're at again. Yep. And, you know, cause you don't want to like tell somebody, I have a doctor that kind of talks to me and sometimes he tells me, you know, just stop eating grains. Just stop it. And I'm like, seriously, this man does not get it. And it drives me nuts because it's not about me losing the weight. It's about me understanding, you know, what I can have in moderation, yeah. what I can have. And it's not, again, trying to like disconnect that Greek me from food in everything has been the hugest part for me, you know? Yeah. That's for me. It might not be for my other clients. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, I like that I could see all that in my head when I'm, you know, talking to someone. Yeah. I can 
can't diagnose like a doctor. <laughs> I diagnose, I pick and choose and see where's the issue, what's going on. I'll make notes. Like, you know, when you're at your therapist office, they're making notes and you're like, yeah. oh my God, is she writing that I'm crazy or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. Did I answer your question? I hope I did. <laughs> you did. You did. You know, I, yeah, you did. And um, it really, it really makes me think of the fact that um, sometimes we just need like that little outside encouragement. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Just, or even it's almost like a mirror, AJ. Yeah. You know, like when you, when you, when I tell my clients to look in the mirror, that's like eye-opening for them. They're like, I look in the mirror every day. I'm like, no, you don't. I said, go look in the mirror. Yeah. Go look in the mirror. And I want you to tell me how many things you love about yourself and your face and your body and everything. Oh my God, it's the worst thing for them. Because, <laughs> but it's actually the best thing for them because they're actually like, wow, I didn't realize I didn't like a lot of things about myself. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, that, well, that negative talk is going on in your head all day. I said, you know, do you ever see the study of the two plants, you know, where they talk yeah. bad to them and then they talk really nice to them. And the one that they talk bad to is dying, literally dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's something that, you know, I talk about with my clients and I think it's a, you know, something that's really eye opening for them when we do that. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So if, if um, you could put one message out, like if you had, if you had to tell someone one thing that could help them start to transform or change their life in a new direction, um, what would be that? What would be that one thing? Like your your um, statement, you know? <laughs> oh boy, go to reboot yourself now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know what? And that you know, it, it's one of the things I would probably say. Um, and I really would say it. And you know, I would say don't judge when you're looking at somebody from the cover because a lot of my clients actually held themselves from calling me because of it. Yeah. And it actually, they didn't realize how much they would actually get from the sessions when they started, yep. you know, and uh, for years they held off. I had one client three years. She watched me, watched me, watched me. She wouldn't call. And then finally she's like, you know, I got to call this lady. Yeah. And we, got, we started out talking about weight. We ended up talking about childhood. Uh, we ended up talking about sex. Yep. And, you know, so there was a lot of things. And that's why Fuck Perfect came in because I'm the Fuck Perfect coach that will, I'm willing to talk about anything, anything. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. that shy, <laughs> as you <Yeah>. can tell. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, this has been super fun. Um, where, like, if, if someone wanted to, to follow you or, or, you know, get a hold of you and, and they're interested in, like, having a coach that's not about being perfect, but that can take them step by step where they want to go, um, where, where can they get a hold of you and, and what's the best method? Well, they can go to my website. It's www.rebootyourselfnow.com. And um, my phone number and all my info is right there. Uh, and I will contact you for your first reboot session. And we will get you going. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Any, any, uh, anything else that you think? Uh, people should know. Yeah. Um, you know, I kind of want to just share again. This is uh, my first book, and it's called The Healthier Greek. Yep. And it's, it's talking about taking control of your insulin resistance or diabetes while eating great tasting food. But in here are so many. It looks like a storybook, but it's not. It's all of my recipes passed down from my mom and my grandma, nice. things that I would have never, ever shared. And my family's pissed at me that I did. <laughs> <laughs> but there's also steps that you could take before you call for the reboot your sessions. Uh, you're so much, you're getting accountability pages. What is your story? Yep. It brings you into steps that you could start taking for yourself. And I think that it's like one of my best projects so far. Yeah, awesome. Even though my coach thinks that this one is, 
finding your best friend. Um, she thinks that one's better, but I like the other one. <laughs> well, I, I will, I will definitely put the, uh, the link. So, Hey, if you're listening and you want to check out the books, definitely do it. I'll put the links down below in the, uh, the description and, uh, Demi, so thank you so much. This has been, this has been awesome. Very insightful. It and I love, really I love nice your I can't wait to see, I can't wait to see what you do now. I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Inspired Efforts Podcast. I want to present you with a special offer for listening today. And so if you go over to CoachAJLou.com, you can get a free marketing strategy session where we're going to take a look at your business and find the little opportunities that can make the big difference in your results. And so if you'd like to take me up on that, go to CoachAJLou.com. I appreciate you listening. Anytime you can share this with a friend or family member that needs a little inspiration, truly appreciate it. And I hope to see you on the next one. Later.